So you're playing everybody's golf. No longer called Hot Shots Golf. Right. Now playing everybody's golf. I can't really talk about Tekken 7 until Wednesday. Okay. Well, let's talk right now about everybody's golf. You're in the okay. beta. Lucky man. I didn't even know there was an open beta or a closed beta. Sign up was a long time ago. Yeah. I forgot I had even signed up. Oh, my God. What a beautiful present that was. Oh, yeah. I was so excited. So we've got classic everybody's golf stuff. And what have they added? Uh, I mean, the there's two main differences that I've, I've only I've wandered around and I've played a, uh, a set of nine. So I'm, mm-hmm. I haven't really spent too much time in it. But the immediate difference is that you can pretty much free roam in this uh, kind of golf island it's like this golf theme park and you're you can just run run among the different holes and run run in the fields and the uh, sand traps and jump into the water and swim around i mean pretty much anything you can see you can run through and jump through and um you know i I had the most pleasant experience going into the online lobby with you the first time we were playing uh hot shots golf world invitational on our ps vita when you and i hooked up for some multiplayer i thought it was so charming getting into that lobby and just being able to run around as your little avatar and jump and kick a ball and yeah i forgot about that part actually it was such goofy silly fun like it was just like what a what a great way to host a lobby and, and i think I, it... I think that goes into what their style is all about it's fun they have yep. they have it where it counts they get serious when it comes to say the physics and you know i never feel cheated when i play that game um, they they nail what counts in terms of gameplay and the mechanics, but then everything else is free game. Um, like Hot Shots, Hot Shots One for the PS One was a little more serious, and then when they branched over to like PS Two, you started getting these really funny caddies. There was like a Sean Connery impersonator, and he, like when you're lining up a really tense shot, he I think he says something like, "If you miss this, I'll kill you." So, is this keeping that same comical vibe, humorous vibe? They didn't go back to serious, did they? No, and you know it's it's it is kind of hard to tell at this point. The beta is very restricted. I mean, there's mm. we have we basically have one course that we're playing through um, that people are just destroying. I thought I was doing really well. I basically uh, it, it seems a little tougher. Mm-hmm. Um, like in in most hot shots golfs, I am when I'm starting out, I'm getting like. A lot of birdies and some pars and if i just really muck things up i might get a bogey but i, I shot all par except for one bogey um and i forget what my score was i think it was like minus one or something and people were getting like 14 under and 13 under at the top oh, of the leaderboards. i have no idea how they were pulling that off it's a thing with the internet anytime you think you're doing good there's always a million people better Ah, oh, geez yeah it was a little rough but um it it as far as how goofy it is i'm not quite sure yet because like there's a lot of options and players and and caddies and courses and campaign that i don't have access to it's basically create an avatar the the character creation suite was really comprehensive comprehensive i was impressed i Mm. i like tweaking things and building my characters and tweaker i am and i like having my avatar just so and uh, there was a lot of options for me so i was really happy about that and i i ended up with a pretty cool tune and uh, so that was nice. And then the the course itself is very well laid out. And that's the other thing about Hot Shots Golf. And um, kind of back to what you were saying, they have it where it counts. The, the courses are always laid out in a really interesting way. There's always well-placed, kind of classy, not in-your-face, obstructive, like just arbitrarily difficult sand traps and, and water traps. They're, the, the challenges are tactful and, and you know, used sparingly. And the courses are fun to engage with over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, you know, you're always taking into account the wind and you have these special trick shots where you're yeah. lining up with the directional inputs. That's all there. The same three click uh, shooting that we all know and love. Um, one change that I'm not sure I'm crazy about is when you're putting in Hot Shots Golf up to this point, you would line up your putt. You know, you would have to try to gauge whether you're going uphill or downhill on the slope of the lay and then you would line up everything perfectly and then you would just gauge your power and mm-hmm. you would stop where how, how powerful you want your putt to be and it would go and you would just hope for the best there it's the same three click um Ooh. hitting now when you're putting so you yeah. click to initiate then you do your power and then you have another it swings back for uh your accuracy and, and control um i you know i kind of liked just having to worry about power when putting because you're already yeah doing so much kind of guesswork when lining up your shots so that it gives it another layer 
of de- it really it just it's one more thing you could screw up when you're putting well and, and long putts and, are always hard and now you're because you're so worried about the increments of how it's sloping left or right or up or down so you could have you could have that technically lined up you know your your aim but yeah. now if you're a little bit off to the left or right i'm assuming it's going to be pushing it left or right mm-hmm. so yeah is there a way to turn that off can you go in baby mode no, well, there is there is an auto impact mode across the board, and it, it does it for mm. all types of shots. Um, I I don't know deal breaker what, man. What the I don't know what the penalty is for that. I guess it might just have a very low percentage of, of getting perfect impact. Which once you play for a long time, it's actually pretty easy to to get those the timing for the perfect impacts. Um, so I'm yeah. I mean, if you're if you're that if you just don't want to worry about it at all, there is an auto impact mode, and that's been there for a few iterations at but least. But you're not able to split it up between when you're on the fairway and the putting. I don't think so. Hmm. Okay. I think it's on or off. Sounds uh, like this but, isn't for I don't everybody. Know for sure. Yeah. Well, only for hot uh, shots. Mm-hmm. Good one. Um, otherwise I don't, I'm, I'm going to buy it and I'm either going to review it. And I'm, I honestly, if I don't end up reviewing the game, I am going to buy it because I, I love hot shots golf and, um, I I've been looking forward to this ever since they announced it last year at the PlayStation experience. Yeah. It's, I've been waiting for a PS4 hot shots golf game, just a good goofy arcadey golf game. And I think there's enough of, uh, I think there's enough like new social aspects to this one that, that yeah, is, yeah. If, if you play with friends i think it's going to be people who aren't expecting it's a budget title it's gonna be like 30 bucks so if, as long as you're not expecting like you know something super high end, you know uh, it's not going to be in 4k uh, and actually it might be i don't know oh what God. kind of ps4 pro <laughs> okay enhancements they're going to have but people online are, are giving it crap for some of the aliasing and some of the jaggies and how the the avatars don't look that great. It's like, are you comparing it to Un- Uncharted Four or like yeah. it, it? You just have your expectations set at a realistic level. If you're a Hot Shots golf fan, you know exactly what you're getting. And I'm a Hot Shots golf fan, and coming into this, I was perfectly pleased by the way it looked and the way it performed. Yeah. And this is a beta, so this is an older build of the game that has been, you know, every beta is basically like an old version that they've had to they, they go gold with an old version of the game and shove it out there so you know i i have confidence that when it actually arrives it's gonna look and perform great and uh probably be a ton of fun especially for people who have friends who will actually you know party up and play together yeah so what what, what are the uh online features it sounds like they've changed that up quite a bit you're going to be seeing a lot of other people playing is that a choice yeah. is it just the people that you choose to be seeing online or is it everybody this is like world of warcraft but golf i don't think it's quite that i mean it it might be more like guild guild wars like more of an instance to where you're in a shared world with you know this many people okay but it was when i was playing you see people just running around the course you might you'll hit you'll tee off and then where your ball lands there might be like two other people you know yards away from you in any direction hitting their balls from where it landed for them and and that's not distracting um, it can be and i'm sure there'll be an option to turn that off but i kind of liked it 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 was Mm. it had this like playground theme park vibe going where everybody was just slugging balls from all over and um you know it wasn't distracting where you know when i was gauging my power meter and and impact meter like it wasn't i didn't have anybody else swinging and teeing off that that are they are they yelling things out uh no i i like you mean like voice chat uh either voice chat or sort of like a taunt button because i mean if you're trying to line up a perfect swing and somebody goes like bullseye four none no. of that no i mean you hear people whacking their balls but that's pretty much just whacking it. whacking off okay all yeah. right <laughs> that's not too distracting so it wouldn't but i mean and i you know it is gonna bother some people i guarantee you mm-hmm. um so they'll they'll have an option i'm sure to kind of toggle that off and just have the the course to yourself even if you're in a shared world but it was fun and you when you're in free roam mode you can run up to any any hole like any of the any like tee off point for any of the holes and just like practice doing one hole at a time and kind of bounce around and Mm -hmm. as you're running through like you're passing people who who are playing you know nine holes and are in the middle of their round in the middle of the green and you can run around and watch people putt and stand by the hole and just see what they're doing and and they can um, see you I assume so because I could see other people you know what I'm not sure when people when you're playing you might only see people who are also playing right 
Um, not the lurkers. But not people who are free roaming. But when you're free roaming, you can see people who are playing. That might be how it is. I could be mistaken, but that's the impression that I got. Because when I was putting, I never noticed people just like running and jumping around the, the green or the fair, or I don't know what you call the spot where you putt from. The putting green? green? I don't know. Yeah, putting green, sure. The green. Yeah. I got it on the green. Green and one. All right, so it's the same Hot Shots Golf we've come to love. It's a nice, cheap price point. It's going to be around 30 to $40. Yeah. And they've added this sort of uh, spectating online world. Yeah. And also, something Sounds like else a Nintendo I noticed. game. When, when I was when I was shooting, it seems that you're gaining experience and leveling up. Oh, as you shoot, like I would take I would tee off and take a shot, and then my power meter would like level up. Uh, it, I would gain experience for power, and then when I would do a trick shot, like a curve shot, and it actually landed on the green, a, a control bar would come up, and I would gain experience for control. Cool. And I was as I was playing, I was leveling up power and control and spin mm-hmm. and all these other things, and um. That was nice. It it gave like it gives you a constant feeling of of progression and getting better sure. as opposed to like finishing a round of nine or eighteen and then like getting some money to buy a new club or you know leveling up after you finish a course. Like you're you're gaining experience and leveling up every single time you hit a good ball. So that's kind of nice too. And it's also motivating you to do maybe some trick shots or or Definitely. explore different techniques you wouldn't have normally gone for. Mm-hmm. that's pretty cool you know uh i had so much fun with the vita version because we were able to play this it's almost like playing chess by mail where i could do a move and then you could do your next shot hours later you could do like one shot yes. a day i loved that feature it's perfect on the vita we really mm-hmm. I, I don't know how many full games we've ever done but i'd like to uh i mean now you're spoiled with this one but maybe when the closed beta is closed you'll be jones and for some more hot shots and we can I am that always one. down for hot shots. Yeah, always. Me too. Me too. I love it. I after I played the first PlayStation One uh, in the N sixty four era, my brother had gotten Wiley Country Club Golf, and I thought, oh yeah, okay, looks nice. But there was one instance where the like the shot meter was very inconsistent. Where if you hit it th- three quarters power in one situation or three quarters power in another situation, it wasn't it wasn't going that same. Like you couldn't predict it. And that's what I loved about Hot Shots Golf is it was very, very mathematical and you yeah. could you could really plan your shots and then it came down to just planning against all the variables and then nailing that three touch swing. So yeah. awesome. I'm so glad it's a budget title. I'd like I don't need sixty dollar American worth of visuals. Just give us no. this. Yep. Game, I mean Hot Shots Golf, it's the gameplay that's king, absolutely. Yeah. All right, cool. Um I was playing a bit of the surge. I saw that. It's, I mean, it's a lot like Dark Souls. And, uh, you know, some people say, oh, you shouldn't compare these games. And, I mean, if you look at, say, the first-person shooter category, I feel like at almost any other genre, it would be very easy to say, oh, it's just like every shooter. It's just like other shooters. And there's only very minute differences, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But I think because Dark Souls was so unique and because the Surge and Salt and Sanctuary take those very, very unique uh, gameplay mechanics like when you die you have to go pick up this um, bit of resources that are left over uh, and just the the way the environments loop around uh, and they use that really smart design souls and bloodborne have where you might take a long time to walk to a certain point but then that'll unlock a shortcut so you can get there again you're constantly i mean it's it's almost everything about the dark souls gameplay nearly everything except instead of a roll it's a dodge hmm. um it's a little easier from what I found, although I'm still only at like level three, like the third stage. Uh, is, is combat similar where you're just light swinging or heavy swinging a weapon and then you can actually, like parry? And- there, no, there's no parrying. There's a block that takes stamina the whole time you're blocking. So just to hold up your arm is draining stamina like wildfire. Hmm. Uh, there is no light and heavy. You can... You can charge up an attack and it'll do maybe a more impactful one. And that sometimes make it makes a difference. But that's you'll get that same attack if you go th- three three hits into your combo. You'll get that same one you would have gotten from charging it up. Uh, what I found a bit difficult is that until I got a really heavy weapon, the, I wasn't canceling the enemy's attack. So I know, you know, in Dark Souls, if someone's winding up for something and you get in there and you poke them, I might be wrong about this, but can you confirm that if you poke somebody... That'll cancel their attack, does it not? 
It depends on the attack. Mm. Are you talking about like in PvP or like bosses when bosses are winding up? No, I mean, bosses are always going to be able to power through everything. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. But I'm talking about just uh, your regular trash enemies, your trash mob people. I, I seem to remember from Bloodborne and Souls that if you get in yeah. there, that's kind of the whole rock, paper, scissors of it. A heavy attack goes through a block. A light attack cancels out a heavy attack. And this this I find until you get to the really heavy weapons and you really charge up and, and swing a big one. Um, it can kind of be very clumsy because it's just very like I'm hitting you, hitting you, and then you're hitting me, and we just kind of all. It doesn't look as graceful as, as say, Dark Souls or Bloodborne. I didn't find that as satisfying. So I find, I spend most of my time staying out of their range, waiting for their one attack or their two attacks. You learn their thing, you go in, and then you try to finish them off, and then learn when they're going to be able to hit you back. So I didn't find that as intuitive. Not very difficult to take on more than one enemy at a time, um, but and it's also not as this is nowhere near as fascinating as as any of the worlds that Dark Souls and Bloodborne have. Where when I go through Dark Souls and Bloodborne, I'm constantly making this face. You know, like a little shocked, a little frightened, and constantly on edge. And yeah. while the combat in this game will get me like hyped up and clenched up, uh, the, you know, it's they don't really do a lot with the world. There's not a lot of world building. They they're starting to slowly dole out the information. But it's a little bit few and far between, so there's not as much compelling me to get to the new area. Whereas, mm. you know, with the Souls series, it was... I mean, sometimes you get to these new areas and you would just stop and look. Yeah. You're like, what the hell is this place? What are those? The enemies are very, very similar, too. They're just... the Most of the ones I'm facing are either annoying flying robots or people in these in these mech suits. So those are all the things that it falls flat. And and it's a, it's a perfectly fine game. And when I went back and, and would grind through some of the levels to, um, because of the limb locking, you can you can choose to either attack an unarmored spot so that they die quicker, or if you want a piece of armor, you want to focus on that, and then you have a certain percentage of chance. If you focus on that to pick it up, you get a damage one, and now you have the schematic to it, so you can, you can go and um, craft that piece. So mm -hmm. when you're going back and sort of farming the areas and doing that, I found that pretty pretty fun, like a pretty kind of relaxing. I'd put a podcast on, and I I enjoyed that. It was um, not as stressful as, as Souls. A little yeah. easier, and it's doing some cool things. It controls really well. It feels good, and I'm hoping that the story sort of picks up later on. But, you know, if right now, it, to me, it feels like a 7, where it's mm. solid, but it doesn't really have that extra edge. And because it is so unabashedly dark souls yeah. i can't help but feel like oh, i wish this was more interesting i wish there was more going yeah. on and i like cyberpunk and, and futuristic and sci-fi stuff a lot more than fantasy but there's not really much there other than a few kind of like the whole you know the the main antagonist is this company you're working for and they're sort of the like google to the extreme and everything's positive and kind of putting a spin on it and man man and machine and woman uh so there's some ideas there but it doesn't it feels a little bit shallowly explored at this point oh it's a shame <laughs> yes but who knows i mean it could it could open up as you go on I, a lot of reviews i've read have said that it does get a little bit bland because all the areas are pretty pretty similar um you have quite a amount of customization with different weapons you can have and then upgrading those um, i've been obsessed with just trying to find the heaviest weapon i can to just pound people and try to like Stun them. That's my. That's been my goal so far. Do you upgrade your mech suit at all to get help with like exploration? You get boosters or. Yeah, actually, the implants. So you have a certain amount of slots that you can put these implants in, and then they give you different bonuses. So one might be plus twenty health. One might be. Um, so sorry, one might be plus twenty health overall for your life bar. One might be an immediate injection of sixty health. One might be ninety health that gives you a, a few health every few seconds. So mm. you get more, but it's over time. Um, one that really started changing the game for me was that it, uh, you have your health, you have your stamina, and then you have this energy, and the energy fills up every time you hit somebody. And the first energy move you get is that once you have that bar about halfway full, you can execute a finishing move. Those look really cool, hmm. and they're really fun. But I found an implant that lets me farm more energy from each strike. Different weapons can farm more energy, and then I found this other implant that lets you convert that energy into health. And as soon as I got that, I stopped doing finishing moves. I put everything into having the biggest health bar. And I found that was a really fun way to play. And 
like a lot of RPGs, I think exploiting the systems in the way that yeah. feels good for your play style is is always a rewarding part of the process. And I thought I found that part pretty rewarding. So there's a lot of customization to be had in, in different play styles. So, you know, it's a perfectly solid, well controlling game. It just um it doesn't seem to have that extra special bit. There's not a lot calling mm. me back to it, but I've had a pretty good time with it every time I've sat down. Cool. But I've never stood. <laughs> uh yeah, man. How about uh, you been playing anything else other than that Overwatch that we played? You've been playing a lot uh, of rhythm rhythm games? Yeah, there's it's a lot of stuff on Switch. Um mm. I I return constantly to voice on Switch. I, it's just something I can't get enough of and yeah. It, the game, you know, the better you get, the more the gameplay opens up because you can start doing more of the difficult songs, which are f- way more satisfying. To do. The crazier it gets, the more satisfying it is to pull off. I can't recommend the game enough. It's been so wonderful. Um, and they've had the ARMS demo going. The oh, They're right. doing a kind of like an online uh, test punch for ARMS that's been going on since yesterday. Unfortunately, I think it, that they're doing an hour-long increments. They want to cram as many people online as possible during this these one-hour slots to just mm-hmm. totally stress the servers. Um, so actually, I, this afternoon was the first time I had gotten to play for this test. I since I played in New York, whenever that was in January or December, whenever I forget when that was, but um, I've been very much looking forward to it, and it's been a lot of fun. I got my wife in here, and she. She tried it out and was terrible, but had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so that's been really nice. I've been getting to use a few new characters and uh, try out a few of the new game modes. They During uh, the latest Nintendo Direct, they kind of did a deep dive into ARMS and talked a little bit more about the modes and new characters and stuff like that. And I didn't know there were going to be extra modes. I was expecting maybe like an arcade campaign, you know, just like a beat 10 people and then fight a boss and... Of course, the online was where I was going to spend most of my time. But there's all these different game modes. They have like a, a volleyball mode where you're Whoa. across a net from somebody and there's a big exploding ball and you have to keep knocking it back and forth. And if it lands on your side, it blows up and the other person gets a point. And um, <laughs> I played maybe six or seven rounds of that and it was so much fun. Right. And there's a... You know, there's a lot of strategy that goes into it because, you know, when you're fighting, each character has three or four different arms, weapons that you can attach to each arm and you can switch them up and, uh, you know, some shoot out a huge slow moving thing that, you know, uh, might take a while to get to its target, but it can like blow through other attacks and there's like boomerangs that curve much more effectively. There's things that shoot out like three or four, like weaker shots. Uh, so that you, depending on what you're doing, you, you pick your your arms and your weapons accordingly. And in volleyball, it makes a big difference because, um, you know, both people are just kind of focusing on one mutual target the whole time. And, um, yeah, it just really changed things up. And, uh, there's going to be a basketball mode where you are kind of like sparring and then you have to like try to, you have to grab people near the goal to slam dunk them into the hoop and, uh, or like punch them from far away to get a three pointer. And really, uh, so this is turning in, this is turning into the Wii sports for the switch. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, our, it's it's like a it's a straight up fighting game, but they're they're being really inventive with the modes, mm-hmm. um, to to make the most out of the the very unique, uh, combat mechanics and gameplay. And I I I like that so much because, um, you know, I I was looking forward to being satisfied with just a fighting game, with kind of the bare bones fighting game modes, um, and we're getting a lot more than that. And, and the volleyball is something they threw in for this test punch for people to try. And it's been a lot of fun. And there's, I played in a three person mode where it was, and you know what? The lobbies were shockingly advanced for Nintendo. Nintendo is so behind when it comes to online stuff. Yeah. Um, but you get in a lobby with like eight other people and it's like this live thing where you see everybody's like little avatar bubbles floating around and there's like three different games going on and like your little avatar will float to one of the game bubbles and you you get paired up with like a few other people with different mode one lo- in one lobby there's like three different games going on at any given time with the eight players kind of like split up amongst them okay at, at at one given time there might be a one versus one fighting match over here a one versus one volleyball match, uh, a three person free for all, and then a two against two team battle. And uh, at, and when everybody's done with all their matches, everybody can, the bubbles start floating around, and people get paired up in different game types with different people. It's really really cool. It's it's a system that I haven't really seen in any game before, and it was very interactive. And you could kind of 
you know, if you get KO'd really early, you could kind of come back out in the lobby and you see this big orb for each game that's going on and, and everybody's little player icons and you can see when people are getting hit and hurt and how they're doing. And um, it was very interesting. It was cool. And uh, the game modes were all fun. The, the two versus two battles, it's you and a partner versus another person and a partner and you're tethered together. So mm -hmm. you're punching and switching targets. And if you get... You know, if you get knocked back and thrown around, you're tethered to your partner, so they get dragged back with you, and you have to really work together to uh, take down the opponents. Uh, it was fun, and the the one on one on one three player battles were chaotic, and there's just a lot more than I was expecting, and it all turned out to be a blast. So, when you're trying to play that game uh, multiplayer with somebody that's around, do you you have to have two Joy-Con for one? Do you need another pair of Joy-Con, or could someone else use the Pro Controller? You can use the Pro Controller, yeah. I, I like playing motion controls, Joy-Con in each hand. You know, you're moving and then punching mm -hmm. and curving your punches and dashing, jumping. But you can play with the Joy-Con put into the grip uh, in a standard controller mode or with a Pro Controller. And uh, I did play one round uh, with the Joy-Con in the grip just to see. I, I, didn't, I had no idea how standard controller controls would work because mm -hmm. I only ever played with motion controls, and they worked fine. And some people swear by them. Um, but yeah, I, I prefer the motion controls. But to answer your question, yeah, you can play with a standard controller. For, if, like, say you wanted to play with your wife or whoever was around. Yeah. Uh, okay. Very cool. That's, yeah, it's, I think people weren't um, weren't too hot on ARMS at first. They were pretty pretty wary of it. I, I think one to switch sort of, they lumped it in with that category of, like, uh, what's going on here? We don't like any of their sort of, uh, those are their launch gimmicky kind of titles but this one seems like uh, people are getting pretty excited about it um i love all the different modes i mean just exploring that exploring that uh that really just kind of fun sandbox of holding these joy con and, and messing around with it um how do, how do the controls feel does it feel like very very one-to-one -one? is it almost sort of like a virtual reality type arm control of it or is it more like do you really need to extend your arms out or could you just sort of like cheese it and just kind of go dit, 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 to get... you, you can definitely like, it just takes a very short jab to, oh, okay. to actuate a punch um actuate but it's yeah or nice. initiate maybe yeah. no i'm gonna stick with actuate i like actuate um, it feels almost like you're controlling a Gundam or something because oh, you, cool. you you hold the, a Joy-Con in each hand kind of like in a thumbs-up position and your thumbs are down on the, the shoulder buttons. And uh, you you move by tilting both your hands together, you know, mm -hmm. back and forth and side to side. And uh, that takes a little bit of getting used to because we're so used to just moving with the left thumb and the left hand. I, I kept you in moments where I'm panicked and I'm really trying to get out of a... a, a a pickle i'm like i'm trying to do things with my right hand and move with my left and it's right it you have to remember to use both your hands like in tandem to move around and that takes like three or four matches to to get used to but once it clicks um it the game starts really opening up its layers of depth and complexity and strategy it's it's amazing to see two players who know what they're doing go at it because they you know you're you're dodging and moving at a very high pace and jumping and air jumping in the air and air dodging and um, the fact that you your arms extend to such a long length it almost feels like a shooter it's like in quake right. you have to kind of lead with your rocket launcher you have to like really gauge where your opponent is going to be and the fact that you can throw out these punches and then curve them and, and really dramatic um, you know set them on these really dramatically curved paths you're it's a lot of prediction and like reading your enemy and forcing them into certain positions that you can take you might you might have a huge weapon equipped on one arm and you might purposefully throw it out to the left and curve it to the right to force them right. to move like out of its way and then you you know you throw out a quick moving kind of boomerang arm to catch them and clock them from that side and um, so you're constantly formulating like how to catch your opponent how to feign attack to make them do one thing so that you can catch them in a grab and you know, and they're doing the same thing. You're trying to d jump and dodge and use the environment. The environments are all extremely interactive, and there's always um, things to move behind or jump onto or off of uh, in the environments. And uh, it's, it's it's really interesting. It's it's a fantastic take on the fighting game, and it, it uses the Joy-Con brilliantly. So if you're missing boxing games and you've got the itch, you can play like Muhammad Ali on the Nintendo Switch. Yes. Sounds good. Well, I think that's going to do it for today. 
thank you for coming on, my friend. Yeah, people, people can find you at comicbook.com. WW slash gaming. Slash gaming. Yeah. And on Twitter at Matthew Face. Matthew with two yep. T's. Yes. And you can find me on Twitter at Game Think Talk. And of course at a 90s kid. Thanks everybody for watching. Like it or subscribe. You know, do all that crap. You've watched YouTube before, but share it with somebody you think might like it. Thank you. Bye for now. Right on.